Shabbat Shalom everyone, and all praise to the Most Yahuwah Aloha, and unto our done and Savior Yahusha Mashiach. And welcome to another episode on Yahshua Discovery Channel. And today, we'll be talking about the great deception to come. Yeah, because it's got a lot to do with what's going on right now. With everything that we've seen unfolding, yeah, you know this pandemic and their solution that they're going to force you to take. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, has a lot to do with the great deception to come. And for those that don't know or that, are, that are, you know, between the fans and everything, if you do not know who's the creator, who is your savior, who you're serving, you're going to make a big mistake when the deception will show up. That's why the reason of this video, what I'm ready to do is get into it. 1843, while excavating for archeological treasures, a group of men led by French scientist Paul Emile Bata came upon the remains of a huge Assyrian palace and within it an abundance of Sumerian cuneiform inscriptions. When translated, the inscriptions told of what archaeologists believe to be the world's oldest civilization and a group of powerful beings called the Anunnaki. The Anunnaki was a term of the gods used by the ancient Sumerians. But the original form of it, it simply meant the sky people. It meant those that were connected with the stars. The Anunnaki were seen to be the givers of civilization to mortal kind. And they are described as having these shining eyes and having a radiance and an otherworldly feeling about them. Based on 30 years of studying the Sumerian cuneiform tablets, in 1976, author and researcher Zechariah Sitchin published a book called The Twelfth Planet, in which he proposed that the Sumerian gods were, in fact, refugees from another world. According to Sitchin's interpretation of the tablets, these alien visitors, the Anunnaki, created humankind. It appears to be that gods came down and literally started a colonization project here on Earth, creating us in their image and after their likeness. And once you break out of the matrix, it's easy to understand what's going on. They're basically telling you that you evolved, you live on a spinning ball, flying through space and all that stuff. Yeah? You know what I'm saying? There's no God, the Bible is not true. They're basically telling you all of that stuff. Meanwhile, programming you to believe that there's some other lives out there they may have created us and all that stuff, you know what I'm saying? They're trying to get in contact with us, you know what I mean? They're yeah, programming you on the news, the media, shoving it down your throat, basically, you know what I'm saying? For you to believe it, and that's the great deception, yeah? They're doing everything in their power for you to not believe in the so-called Bible, yeah? Meanwhile, indoctrinating you, programming you to believe in their stories that some other life form may have created us and they're trying to get in contact with us. Yeah? Programming you with their movies, putting subliminal things in their movies, you know? Telling you that, oh yeah, the Bible is not true, but meanwhile, these movies are highly biblical. Highly biblical, full of occult and all that stuff. So what's going to happen is they're going to try to show up in the sky and all that stuff and tell you that they're your creator, they were Jesus, Allah, Buddha, and all of that nonsense. You see what I'm saying? That's literally what they're trying to do. And y'all are going to get on board with them. I mean, look around right now. People running around because of this solution vaccine stuff from the pandemic that it started a long time ago. Yeah? That they're showing you in movies and video games from the 2000s and all that stuff. Yeah? Y'all need to wake up. Y'all need to wake up. The grip deception is coming. And I'm sure some of y'all don't believe that they're programming you. Because you're trusting your government, you're trusting the media, they would never lie to you. No, they can't do that. Hmm. <laughs> Meanwhile, they're programming you with these movies already. With these things on media. 
So then when the Antichrist is going to show up, it's going to tell you that he's your creator and all that stuff. That he came from a distant galaxy and realistically he was Allah, Buddha and all that stuff. And I'm, I'm going to show you that they're programming you. Previous Marvel superhero movies have been kind of somewhat human, right? And mm. this is really strange because Marvel's taken another step back into a different kind of new superheroes that are not displayed as people, basically. Mm -hmm. They're saying that these are people from away from Earth and they so are alien. alien, yeah, basically. And, and they are coming to help Earth. I mean, it's it's the same scenario, and they're based off of these Sumerian gods, the same ones that have been talked about constantly by Marvel, and talked about constantly by the UFOologists. That and ancient about. aliens and all of that. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Okay, let's look at this trailer then. Again, this thing is highly biblical as well. So they're making you believe that some magical or extraterrestrial people came long, long time ago and showed men how to do this and that. You know, the pyramids and all that stuff. Maybe they were the people that did that and all that stuff. When this thing is highly biblical, realistically. And it all goes back to the fallen angels. Satan, the book of Enoch, yeah, and the story that we were told in the times of Noah, literally, but they're not going to tell you that, they want to hypnotize you with these Marvel's nonsense, for you to believe that, and realistically it's a twofold story, and when I'm saying it's a twofold story, it's because they want to make you believe that some of these extraterrestrial people, they're good, and some of them are bad. So then, if the one that we don't want shows up, then we're going to have to fight them. We're going to have to all get together, put our differences aside and all that stuff. It's not because I'm black, because I'm white, because I'm Hindu, because I'm Christian, because I'm Muslim, whatever. Yeah? Atheists, we're all going to have to put a difference aside and fight this enemy. Meanwhile, this thing is prophecy, is in the script, and realistically, they're gonna try to bang on Mashiach. Turian people, Pleiadian people, and the Syrian people came to this world to teach and give humans the key to open your eyes within. Anunnaki claimed themselves like those protecting humans from the species like snakes and the giants. The idea of human gods was created in Atlantean times by the Arturians and the Orion people. Syrian people came to this world in a triangle spaceship. They taught the architects of this world how to create the pyramids on this planet. The concepts and the ideas that we have of gods and goddesses is really mistaken by history. So as you can see, like I said, they're promoting this stuff, shoving it down your throat. This is a YouTube advert, y'all. <laughs> so, you see what I'm saying? They're promoting this stuff. They want to make you believe that there are good ones and bad ones. The bad ones, we need to fight them. Put all our differences aside and all that stuff. Yeah? Meanwhile, realistically, what they call the bad ones is basically the Christ. Hamashiach, the real one, not a fake one. And all of us are going to gang up against him. What I'm saying, all of us, I'm talking about general terms. Yeah. 
That's why you need to know whose side you on. You need to know who you're the creator and everything. Because time is near, y'all. I'm telling you, with this pandemic, time is near. So then when you put the whole biblical story into perspective, you understand the origin of things and you need to. If not, you'll be gullible. And you're gonna fall into the trap of the devil. Just like the, these people that's trying to get this initiation nonsense that I just showed you. If they knew that these things are the so-called gods that people have been worshipping for the longest. And that realistically they're fallen angels, they're demons, then they will understand who is the real enemy. And that's what you need to do. Understand who's the real enemy. And understand who's the real savior, who's the real creator. And if not, you'll be confused and you're going to follow the Antichrist. Because that's the end goal, realistically. You know, these Egyptian gods that they've been worshipping and all that stuff. People still worshipping them right now anyway. These so-called elites, this is what they're worshipping. The devil, yeah. But all of these other so-called gods, these so-called entities and all that stuff, they're worshipping them. And they are in contact with them. And this is why you need to know the biblical narrative to put things into perspective. Yeah, and that's and when you understand the biblical narrative, and that it has to do with these gods that people have been worshiping, then it all makes sense. You know the monsters of mythology and all that stuff. All of that is intertwined with the biblical narrative. But you need to know what biblical narrative and realistically it's basically the time of Noah and with the time of Noah also you need to understand the book of Enoch and there's been a growing movement of people that don't want other believers to read the book of Enoch but they don't understand that is the higher ops that don't want them to know the truth. And then they come to us and say, oh, you're trying to get some secret knowledge and then doctrines of demons and all that stuff. No. Well, realistically, the most I want us to know this kind of stuff. But if you don't have the whole perspective, then how are you going to understand? If you don't know who the fallen angels and the book of Enoch and all that stuff, you're not going to understand the whole scheme. So let's dive into the biblical narrative. It is shit. In Genesis chapter 6, we want verse 1 and 2. And it came to pass. When men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of Elohim, or sons of God, if you want, saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they choose. So right there, we were told that the Bene Elohim, the sons of God, they now realize that. The daughters of men, yeah, the daughters of Adam, humankind, females, that they look good. And then, they took themselves wives. Now, bear in mind, for those of you who are trying to say that, Oh, no, it's the sons of Seth, they're not fallen angels and all that stuff. We were told that human multiplied, meaning they were making babies. I'm trying to get to use your brain. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, the sons of God, the sons of Elohim, they realize that daughters of men look good. So, if you use your brain normally, when people multiply, they make babies. So, mankind been knowing that daughters of men look good. Yeah, I mean, if you're trying to say that people are trying to make babies and they didn't look at each other or whatever, but anyway. <laughs> So, we understand that there's already a multiplication of humankind. So, they're making babies. They like each other already. So, how comes all of a sudden now, the sons of Seth, which are supposedly humans, they now realize that the daughters of Adam or female look good. So, it makes sense. That's why we understand that this verse is talking about the sons of God. For those of you that use your brain. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be rude, but I'm just saying. 
But let me give you more evidence. Ayub, or Job, I want you 38, verse 4 through 7. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. So that's the most I ask in Job, yeah, where it was <laughs> when the most I made the foundation of the earth. And that verse makes us understand that the earth has foundation. We came in a spinning ball. But anyway. Who have laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest, or who have stretched the line upon it? So he's asking Job a question that Job cannot answer because when the earth was created according to the biblical narrative, the animals and humans they were not created. The earth, the heaven, and all that stuff that's created before mankind. So obviously, Job cannot know the answer of this question because he's not the most high. And he wasn't even created at this time. He wasn't even born anyway. Let's continue. One verse six and seven. Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? For who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sing together and all the sons of Elohim, sons of God, shouted for joy. So you can't tell me that if humankind were not created at this point, when you know the story that the most I was talking right now, yeah, that this. Sons of God is talking about the sons of Seth. Because sons of Seth, they're sons of Adam. And Seth is the son of Adam. So no, the sons of God or the Bene Halluhim, the angels, obviously. So I'm just pointing this out so then people are not gonna trick you and trying to say that, oh, he's trying to make you believe some stuff. No, the book of Enoch, people believe in the fallen angels is not true. Yeah, it is true. This is literally what the biblical narrative is telling you. Let us continue. So I'm going back to Genesis chapter 6, or Genesis chapter 6. And we're on now, we're jumping down to verse 5 to 6. And Elohim saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of his thought, of his heart, was only evil, continually. And it repented Yahuwah that he had made man on the earth. And it grieved him at his heart. So right now, we were told that this town was so wicked that most of us like, why did I even make man? Obviously, it's just poetic right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the most I knew, but it's poetic right now. They're trying to give us a perspective so we understand the gravity of the situation. Let's continue. Verse 7. And Yahuwah said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast. Now, we're talking about destroying the beast as well. What have they done? But anyway. And the creeping things and the fall of the air. For it repented me that I have made them. You see what I'm saying? Right there. What have they done? If there's no such thing as the fallen angels and all that stuff, why have they done for the most part they want to kill them? Or want to destroy them? Yeah? Why have they done? It's because, like I showed you, the fallen angels came on a scene and messed up the whole creation. Trying to create some hybrids and stuff like that. Trying to show some secret knowledge to man. Some secret technology to man. I'm trying to mess up with the gene pools of the animals and humans at the same time. Like we see in these crazy movies. Like I said, these movies are highly biblical. That's why you need to understand biblical narrative. Because they know the truth. They're not going to tell you the truth. You need to look for it. So you know whose size you are now. So now let's go to the so hated book of Enoch. The book of Hanak. And we want Chapter 8. We're going to start from verse 1. And Azazel taught men to make swords and knives and shield and breastplates and made know to them the metals of the earth and the art of working them and breastplates and ornaments and the beautifying of the eyelids and all kinds of costly stones. So right there we see that Fallen angels, that's 
basically the connection with the story of um genesis chapter 6 when you know the sons of god came and had you know uh human wives and all that stuff now we were told that's in the book of enoch yeah now we were told it's the same story basically we were told that at this point the angels yeah what we call the angels received them they're not angels but anyway they showed men some stuff some secret knowledge that they were not supposed to know and this angel right here so called is teaching men how to make swords how to use the metals of the earth basically how to use crystals and stuff like that you know how to use the mineral resources literally that's what it is let's continue in one verse two to three in all the colorings tinctures and there arose much godlessness and they committed fornication and they were led astray and became corrupt in all their ways so because the first Azazel showed them how to fight and all that stuff with weapons and everything and how to use the metals of the earth the minerals and all that stuff yeah they become godlessness now basically so it was a whole mess let's continue and Sam Jazar taught the intention and root cutting and Amroz the resolving of enchantment and Bahaji Ja taught astrology Kokabel the constellations Ezekiel the knowledge of the clouds Arakiel the signs of the earth Shamsiel the signs of the sun and Sariel the course of the moon so all this stuff men were not supposed to know that at first now we're trying to understand where the stars are going and all that stuff blah 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 and all this crazy stuff or either other way maybe it could have been a thing where the Mosai would have revealed it to us at one point but in his own time now we're told that all this stuff the fallen angels showed it to them and some stuff that's listed right here some of you guys are doing it the cutting of roots is basically psychedelic drugs yeah for those of you like puffing on that stuff yeah enchantment for those of you that like chakra and all this new age stuff all of this stuff comes from these devil fallen angels now you understand why it is important to know the biblical narrative because i'm saying biblical narrative you may think oh yeah narrative so it's some sort of medical mythology stuff no when i'm talking biblical narrative i'm saying the historical narrative the real history the origin of things and there's no other focal book that can tell you and pinpoint the origin of things in a way where it makes sense so now let's get some perspective because on top of showing things to mankind is remember these so-called angels sons of god in halloween they also had offsprings with the females humans yeah all right so first book you knock still and we want chapter 15 in verse 89 and now the giants of Nephilim, who are produced from the streets and flesh, shall be called evil spirits upon the earth. And on the earth shall be their dwelling. Evil spirits have proceeded from their bodies, because they are born from men and from the holy watchers, is their beginning and primary origin. So, to get a little context, you know, the most I destroyed them basically. He made them kill themselves, basically kill each other, yeah. And he made the so-called angels or something God watch that happen. And now the result is because they have humans and have spirit too, then we know the spirit don't. The spirit never dies, basically, yeah. Spiritual beings, yeah, not your spirit, spiritual beings. But anyway, <laughs> so the spiritual beings never dies. So the flesh or their bodies are dead. But the spirit is not in the earth 
And we were told that they're now forced to become evil spirit on earth. So now you understand what is an evil spirit. It's the spirit of one of the fallen angels. So one thing you need to understand is that they hate us. They want to destroy us. If they can eat us, they will do it. Because that's what they were doing anyway at first. But literally, that's what we're told right here. Let's continue. Same, chapter 15, verse 10. And there shall be evil spirit on the earth, and evil spirits shall they be called. As for the spirits of heaven, in heaven shall be their dwelling. But as for the spirits of the earth, which were born upon the earth, on the earth shall be their dwelling. And the spirit of the giants, afflicted, oppressed, destroyed, attack, do battle, and work destruction on the earth and cause trouble. So see, like I just said, they hate us and they just want to, you know, conspire against us. And now they're possessing or showing or revealing themselves to the so-called elites. That's really what it is. They're trying to make you believe that these are your creators. When in fact, these are demons. That's what it is. And there's a time when they're going to be able to show up again. Yeah. And when they're going to be able to show up again is the time of the anti mashiach or the Antichrist. When spiritual activity will be at its height. Just like the time of Jesus or Yahusha. When Yahusha was there, the spiritual activity was at its height. Demons were showing up and all this stuff. And it's the same time that's going to happen because anti mashiach is the reverse. And it also means that when we see the anti mashiach or the Antichrist, coming then that the real one is going to show up too hence why they need to make you believe that there are some good ones and some bad ones realistically the bad ones going to show up first and they're going to tell you that oh yeah they're your creators and they're helping you and they're going to give you technology and all that stuff they're going to help you do all kind of stuff yeah and realistically they're not the good ones and they're going to tell you that what is the real good one is the bad one I know it's like confusing, but it's really what's going to happen. And that is the great deception. And that's why I made this video for you to understand. Because regardless of what you believe, it's going to happen anyway. Somebody's going to show up on the scene and try to tell us that he's our God. That's what the scripture says. So regardless, you, even if you don't even believe in the New Testament, in the Old Testament, they're talking about the Antichrist. So, works both ways. And that's what you need to understand and know the biblical narrative. Let us jump to verse 12 now. Chapter 15. Still in the first book of Enoch. They take no food. Still talking about the evil spirit. The spirit of the uh, Nephilim or giants. But nevertheless, hunger and thirst and cause offenses and these spirits shall rise up against the children of men and against the woman because they have proceed from them so you see they think what they want is destroy us literally and these elites they've been working with them your stars that say oh yeah i have this spirit coming in me and now i can sing and they're talking about this crazy stuff that they have, you know, people watching over them and people showing them how to write this and that or people showing them how to, you know, um, paint stuff for the movies and all of these so-called celebrities and people of Hollywood. All they say is that they have experiences with spiritual, spiritual guides and all that stuff. This is them, these devils, these demons, literally. That's what it is, and that's why you need to know who size you on. Because time is near, y'all. And once again, I'm not saying that's tomorrow. I'm just saying time is near. But you're not going to say that I'm a false prophet and I'm saying time is near and I'm talking about it's tomorrow. No, I'm saying we're in the last lane. I don't know, we got 100 years 
I know if we got 20 years, 10 years, 5 years, 1 year, but we're in the last lanes. That's all I know. And I'm doing this video to warn y'all. Oh, I learned that Satanists believe that they have to reveal who they are in some way, shape, or form. So that is why we see a lot of these occult members in Hollywood constantly flaunting symbolism. We see the pyramid, the Illuminati pyramid a lot. We see the evil one eye constantly. It's always on the cover of magazines. We see these are supposed to be the 666 devil symbols. We constantly see those symbols. We also see pedophile symbols, the swirl or the triangle within a triangle. I guarantee you this one is first. And we also see a lot of these members of the cult go on their social media and they talk about raping children. They talk about worshiping Satan and people write it off as a joke. Well, I'm telling you, I'm warning y'all. First book of Hanukkah, first book of Enoch, chapter 16, we want one and two. From the days of the slaughter and destruction and the death of the giant, from the souls of whose flesh the spirit, having gone forth, shall destroy without incurring judgment. Thus shall they destroy until the day of the consummation. The great judgment in which the age shall be consummated over the watchers in the godless, yea, shall be wholly consummated. So, right there, the same is the day of destruction for these evil spirit and they're gonna wander and do all the nonsense that they're doing all the evil that they're doing until that day so this is the spirits that your elite is messing with there's not only satan there's satan in his bowls so i'm trying to make you understand it's not only ashatan ashatan in his bowls and there's other also beings the principalities and all that stuff you need to understand all that I'll be too long for this video, but still, I'm warning y'all, choose your side. Let's continue. And we want to pick up on this evil spirit and see if we've spoken about it in the New Testament. So, Kazayam or Kazum, Revelations, we want chapter 16, verse 13 to 14. And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs. Come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them to the great battle. Yeah? So right there, even at the end time, like it says in the book of Enoch, they're still going to be doing their evil work. It's not going to stop. That's their so-called job. Literally. They condemn. Just like Asatan is condemned. And that's why they're going to come with this deception. And people like me want to warn you before you make a big mistake. And you side with the wrong people. Yeah, let's continue. And please, if you want more information on this kind of things, you know, the devil and, you know, uh, the other principalities and other stuff, I made a video called Israel the Mission. Yeah, so you can go check it out. Check out also my True Gospel series and the other videos talking about repentance, talking about sin, and talking about. The true doctrine to follow. Literally. There's a lot of work to do, y'all. It's not about, yeah, Jesus loved you and that's it, and then you're just gonna go to heaven. No. There's obedience, sacrifice. And I'm talking about true sacrifice of persons, of you, <laughs> of your life, basically. Yeah? Not like getting killed and all that stuff. It may happen, but I'm talking about sacrifice of your life. You know, living your life for the great cause, the good cause, you know. So here we go, y'all. So please, I know people like these conspiracy things and all that stuff, but at the end of the day, 
we got to expose these things, but also we got to talk about repentance because that's the true thing that's going to save us. The grace of the Most High. The reason why Mashiach died on the cross for us, for our sins. Rishon Yahukanan, or First John, chapter 2, a one verse 2. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but also for the sins of the whole world. So there's repentance of everybody watching this video. I'm not one of these crazy Israelites going out here telling people that they're going to go hell because they're white or whatever. No, I don't care. I'm here to preach the Pashura, my real mission. Here to preach the gospel. Here to make people want to follow the Mosa and want to keep his Torah. That's what I'm trying to do. Regardless the Israelite or whatever, heathen, I don't care. My mission is my mission. So you can see whatever way you want in the comment section, but my mission is my mission. So now let me show you why I don't want you to find this great deception. So because I am a Kazum relation, 20 verse 4, and I saw the thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahusha, or Jesus. And for the word of Yah, in which had not worshipped the beast, see, they don't fall into this great deception of the UFOs and all that nonsense, yeah, and this one word religion stuff or whatever, the Antichrist and all that stuff. They didn't fall into it. Let's continue. And worship not the beast, neither his image, neither had received the mark upon their forehead or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Hamashiach a thousand years. You see? That's the reason why I don't want you to fall in it. Yeah? I want you to come and we all gonna be balling with the most high. That's what it is. I want you to fall into the trap of the devil. So choose your side. Because what you're gonna be siding with, that's what you're gonna stick up with at the end. And until the end. Let's make a choice now. Let's pick back up. So Kazam. Or Revelations 17 and 14. They shall make war with the Lamb. And the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is the Adon of Adonim. And the King of Kings. And they are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And they that are with him. Excuse me. So right there. Because of the great deception, they're going to make war with Mashiach when it's going to come. I told you, they're going to tell you that the bad ones are going to show, show up first, but they're going to act like they're the good ones. And all now, everybody's been worshipping them anyway. The celebrities that you love so much, they're worshipping them. They're worshipping these devils. They're worshipping the Antichrist, the anti mashiach So everybody's going to side up with them anyway. Because they're going to believe them. Because all the celebrities and all the politicians and everybody, you know, they're going to be saying, yeah, these are the first ones that came up with us and show us all this good stuff. They told us they were our, our gods and they made us or whatever. And then the next one that's going to show up, we're going to want to fight them, basically. That's what's going to happen. That's why you need to know who is who. And pick up the story at the beginning. So, once again, choose your side, y'all. And everything I showed you is because I want you to know who is your creator. So, who side you on, basically. And where you freaking live. Because, no, you don't live on a spinning ball. And there's no such thing as space. It's part of the deception as well. Yeah? You live on a flat plane. There's a dome over you. And all of these so-called heavenly bodies, they inside that dome. Sun, moon, and stars, and all that stuff. And that's the reality. I'm afraid to tell you the reality. So don't be thinking about space and all this stuff. It's not true. It's part of the deception. 
They want to make you believe there's some other lives out there and then we all small and there's no such thing of God or whatever. No. You're being created. You have a purpose. You don't live on a spinning ball hurling through space. The earth is flat. And one thing I wanted to add is that you know this deception. We were told that even believers are going to believe in that deception. And as a matter of fact, Christians and some people imagine that Jesus is like that. Or at worst, like this one. For the Muslims and all the other people that may believe in Jesus. Historically. They think it's like that. So I don't see why they would gig up on him if they can recognize him. But if that dude show up. Yeah? That one right here. The black guy. If that dude was to show up. Trust me that everybody's going to get up on him and say, No, this can never be Jesus. This can never be Yahusha. Yeah? So I got to be truthful at the end of the day. I got to tell you the truth. I want you to know who's the creator. And I want you to know who's the savior. And as a matter of fact, scripture says, Anyway, your creator and your savior. So same difference. That's why you need to know who saws you on. You can gaslight me and say, well, you shouldn't be devices or whatever. But the evidence is here. And we have more evidence for this one being very Yahusha. But I digress. So I hope that this video has been an enlightenment for you. That now you know the truth. That now you will seek for truth. And that you worship the real creator, Yahuwah. And his son, Yahusha Mashiach. And that you will be out of deception. And that you will choose the good side. The side of your creator. Not the side of the devil. Not the side of deception. And I pray. That any of you. Watching this video. Come to the truth and truly repent. And. I'll end this video. With a Shabbat Shalom.